So yo guys, it's me, just ja, um, negative to positive. You know, you know the one. By now, you know what I'm saying. Channel's popping. You know what I'm saying. All praise to the most high. There, you get me. Doing well. Um, you might realize I've got a bulletproof vest on. Um, I made a few TikToks the other day with this bulletproof vest, and yeah, I got a lot of comments saying, "Oh man, I'll just shoot you in your head," and you know, oh, whatever, whatever people were saying, yeah. Um. But the reason why I've got this best on in this video is because I want to try and reach out to the youth with a just speaking from experience now. Like, so when you're active on road, yeah, you're active, and if you're an active member, you know, a gang member, whatever, and you're on it, yeah, you have things in place ready. Like, you have your Jeeps parked up, yeah, you have your stolen cars parked up, yeah. You have your straps put down, yeah? You have your weapons put down. You have people ready. You know what I'm saying? You have petrol ready. You have it all ready because when you're active and you've got beef, you're ready, yeah? A little super bike put there. A little pedal bike put there. You know what I'm saying? Like everything, like when we was active, you know, these sort of things was at, 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 at hands, like ready. Like you're not coming into our area. I'm thinking you're going to do something to us in our area. Like, it just wouldn't have happened, yeah? Um, a few people came and they got run back out. You know what I'm saying? And then a few other people were meant to come. And then armed police just come everywhere. Like, that's how it goes on the road, isn't it? Like, it's peak. But anyway, getting into it, you have all them things to protect you. So, when I was on the road, obviously, you've heard a lot of my stories now. So I'm not going to go too deep into all of that stuff. But all my friends that put work in, like you might see me chilling with these guys and this and that, but none of them put work in. None of them are bangers, yeah? But my certified guys that was on it and they were bangers and, and they would ride out with me, even if I, even if it was just a little bit of pressure. But, you know, you have them guys that don't really want to do it, but you give them a little pressure and they do it, yeah? All of them are in jail now. And I was obviously still out here, still robbing, man. Like I was still out here robbing people. And I don't care what anyone's got to say, judge that shit, just that there were people knowing you know, I've robbed them. It is what it is. Not just man in Bradford, man out of town, robbed them. And I had information that I'm going to get shot. So I had the beef going on where I got chopped, but that wasn't even my, my fucking, I wasn't even bothered about that. Like, they weren't even really on my mind. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it was more of these other guys from out of town, um, over like four boxes. I think to myself, these are going to shoot me, you get me? These are going to put me down, you get me? My team's not about. I've just got me. But, you know, that's all I really ever needed anyway. I, was, I wasn't scared, but I thought I need to protect myself. So I bought a bulletproof vest. Um, I bought this vest. This is why I've got it on because I'm showing you. Because I thought this is going to protect me. You know, my jeeps, whatever I've got put down, my, my whatever around me, whatever is going to protect me. I'm nice. But if, if I obviously, you can't always have certain things on you, consistently on you. So I thought if they catch me slipping, they let a few shots off, I've got a vest on. People say they might shoot you in your head, but it's very rare that man come and just bang one in your head. Like, it does happen, I know. But this is Bradford, you know, let's be real, yeah. It doesn't happen often, you know. Um, so, yeah, I bought the vest, but I never thought the vest would protect me. So, I got these in front and the back of me. Protective plate. Like, I, I, the army use them in it, but I think someone told me these are, like, old ones. That, that's why they were for sale, because they were useless or something. But, fucking tough anyway, you know what I mean, give me that extra protection, so I'm walking around Bradford everywhere, in the summer, red hot, in my shorts, my vest, my Louis shades, thinking I'm a gangster, but I wasn't, I was just a little dickhead, yeah, never been a gangster, yeah, I just wanted to be one, but I've never been one, gangsters are fucking, you know, rich millionaires, paid out the way, I, that's, but me and nah, I anyway, I was just a fucking straight, I don't know, aggravated individual, yeah, so, boom. I thought all these, this is going to protect me, in it, But then, like like I said, because I'm robbing all these different people, so I thought, yo, I need protection. My guys were all locked up. You know what I'm saying? So, anything I had to go and do, it would have been me doing it, i.e. pick some up or let this off or do this. It, to, it would have been me, yeah? And I was still active. Like, I didn't give a shit. So, a guy's being done in. Another guy got dragged out of his house. So, obviously, the repercussions, repercussions are real, in it? 
So I'm thinking, right, I need to protect myself. So I'm thinking this is going to protect me. So anyway, the day that I actually got caught slipping, I was driving on Ruler Lane. I've seen them. Yeah, we'll call them, you know, enemies. Call them ops these days, don't you? So we've seen the ops. I've seen the ops. I was on my own, other side of Ruler Lane. I'm driving. I'm driving down. They're pulling out of McDonald's that way. So I could just kept going and think, fuck them. But because, you know, I'm one of them guys, what was that ops? Fuck this, I'm in the Jeep, boom, straight over Central Reservation. Go shot and boom, licked him. You know the story. Blah blah blah. They caught up to me. They were tooled up. I had no on me. I was fucking bare. Boom, they chopped me up, didn't they? Chopped me to fucking bits, to be fair. But then my point is, that is like my point is there when I'm telling that story because when karma and fate is coming, yeah, you just can't escape it. No matter what shape or form it comes in. You can't escape it. And for me, that was just fate. Like, I've done that. I've rammed them. I could have just drove in as they drove on, drove in a petrol station, gone, gone into somewhere where, yeah, they might have come in for one, two minutes, but they had no ballys on or fuck all. So I don't think they would have gone under camera. I could have, like, I would have even drove up to my street where I would have had, like, a few few guys. They might not have been bangers, but they would have, you know, it would have been peak for them. But I just, you know, I was up for days, like I said. And like I'm saying, it was like fate, in it? It was meant to happen. But like I said, I had nothing on me. So all these things I had at the ready to protect me, my vest, my things, my cars, whatever, they weren't there. Do you get me? Because it was meant to happen. It was fate. It was karma. You know, I was arrested for an offence where a guy was hit once in his head with an axe when I was 15. He went in a coma and I think he nearly died from one hit. I got hit 57 times according to the hospital records. 57 wounds, yeah? And look at that for karma, though. Do you get me? Years and years and years and years later. But what else, when you've got all these things that you can't, that won't protect you from, is calm, is fate, because there's guys in Bradford that we all know that, like, you know, they've been killed and then they've been lifed off. Like, when these things happen, yeah, that is called karma and fate. Like, like no matter how bad and untouchable you are, because you could be bad, you could be untouchable, you could give it to everybody that comes at you fully given it but then in the end yeah you're gonna end up with l plates where you lose everything are you gonna end up dead or are you gonna get done in really bad and then when stuff like that happens you realize around you that all these people around you are fucking fake you know i've had it where like my own friends have turned on me this is just reese like not even long back like they've turned on me then they've rung up the other sides saying we're not with him go and get him you know what I'm saying? And that's how it gets. And that's how it's going to go. Do you know what I'm saying? And all them things you think are going to protect you, they will not protect you from karma, no matter what shape or form it comes in. Like I'm saying, you can be winning all the wars, winning all the beef. You might have a vest on, get shot, it protects you, it saves you. But it's not going to save you from that life sentence or that one day where a man come and put you to bed. Do you get me? And I'm not here trying to tell people to stay off the road, don't grab, do that, man. You get me? I was a fucking grafter every day. Different grafts in here. What can we do? What can we do? What's next? What's next? Like active. But the downfall is, yeah, make money however you're going to make money. But fuck the beef. Like there's too many kids now. They're getting stabbed. Man, they're getting running and fucking shooting man in the face. And, and it's just madness. Like make your money and make bare money however you want to make it. If you've got three, four busy grafts, like. I hate to tell you to stop. You're not going to listen to me. But my advice is allow the beef and allow hurting innocent people because when karma comes, you're not going to escape it. When that life sentence comes, you're not going to escape it. When it comes, yeah, you're going to be crying in your pad with life. You get me? Thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to get an appeal. Oh, yeah, fucking hell, I'm definitely getting out. I'm definitely getting out. It's fucking 10 years in now, 20 years in now, 30 years in now. You're no man now. Where's all them people that fucking you was riding out for, putting work in for? They've moved on with their lives, man. They're not even on the road no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it goes, man. Like, no matter how many, how much you think certain things are going to protect you, when that karma comes, that day comes, fate happens. Because reap what you saw in it. Reap what you saw. If you're out there hurting people like I was, constantly hurting people, constantly robbing people, constantly fucking robbing innocent fucking businesses and people and you know i started off burgling 
Like, all that shit is going to come back to you 10 times harder, mate. It might not come back to you instantly. Like, how many people do you know, yeah, that have actually, like, been fucking burglars or grafters and never gone to jail, never blown the money? Because that money don't last. Do you get me? And that jail sentence is inevitable. But is it worth it in the end? I don't know. You tell me. But, yeah, the point of this of today's story is don't think that your gang's going to protect you. Don't think that your guns are going to protect you. Don't think that all your rammers are going to protect you. All these things that you've got are going to protect you. Because there'll be that one day where you get caught slipping. Or, even worse, you put the work in and then you get the life sentence. And you can think it's all to do with the beef and it's just the comebacks. But it's not. It's karma. It's fair. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. And I'm not even going to stand here and say to you, that these things are not going to happen. These things are fully going to happen. Jail. Death. Beating. Life sentence. Family get hurt. Get me. We've run in man, people's mum's houses. Get me. My mum's house has been set on fire. My door has been set on fire. Like. You know what I'm saying? We've run in people's mum's house. Like, it, when it gets to that level, there's just no, you know what I mean? Because no, someone runs in your mum's house, like, you know, fucking hell, I'm going to kill that person now. Now you try to put a bullet in him. And, yeah, man, it's just an ongoing thing. So if you're out there on the roads making money, make your money. But don't get involved in this fucking dramas, beefs. Because, like I said, all them things, once you your time, they're not going to protect you. I had this on every single motherfucking day. The one day I didn't have it on. I didn't even need it because they had axes, but that's what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, that's life. And anyway, just jar yeah, the documentary's coming. Um, it's going to be about my life. I'm going to go back to the scenes where I'm telling you these people have been dragged out of their homes. And I'm going to go back to the scenes. These are just criminals anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to show you the scenes. And they're all in different areas and postcodes in Bradford. You know, it's, I'm even risking it, stepping into certain postcodes and that with my fucking mic and my camera. And, um, but I don't care. I'm going to go do that and show you. Do you know what I mean? And people can um, see it for yourselves. Like all the stories I've told you, I'm going to take you back to certain places and stuff like that. So it'd be very interesting. I'm going to try to get certain man involved so they can, um, you know, give a little minute on the camera, a little chat. Might be hard for me, but I'll try. And yeah, just stay tuned, man, you know. And thank you for all my subscribers, everyone liking my my podcasts and my videos and stuff you know what i mean i appreciate um doing well get me so yeah man stay tuned just jar negative to positive bless